Hey, thanks for checking out my video today, guys. In today's video, I want to do a, a tutorial on how to install a Flexion extruder. Uh, this extruder is the version, I'm sorry, HT, um, and it actually has two hot ends on it. Uh, the cool thing with this is they're basically hot swappable, which means you can remove um, the extruder without having to dismantle the whole, um, you know, heat break and all that stuff like you do with some of the other extruders. Uh, basically comes out with uh, one single screw right there, right where my finger is. Unscrew that and you can slide the whole extruder out. And if you have quick disconnect on your temp probe and on your uh, barrel element, you can literally do um, a swap out in about two minutes. So uh, the cool thing is with the uh, the HT version, this one here, and you can tell that it's the HT version because of the uh, shape of the actual heat break. Uh, this one, the standard one, actually has a different, it has an actual different um, cut on it. So this is the standard one right here, and then this is going to be the high temp one right here. Um, now this one will allow up to uh, printing up to temperatures of 290 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, and you also get improved uh, performance with PLA, uh, polycarbonates, and uh, nylons with that as well. So um, let's, let's get right into it, guys. So stick around and uh, we'll get this thing going. Okay, so first things first. Uh, what you'll want to do is um, just either uh, you can cut the uh, filament off of your old uh, feeder gear extruder and then just pull the roll off and just set it aside because we're not really going to need that. So what we need to do is we want to first start by getting a couple tools. So we're going to need uh, a two and a half two millimeter and a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench. You're gonna to wanna to have a piece of spare filament, just a short piece. This is gonna help set up the, um, the new uh, extruder gear. Make sure that it's aligned properly uh, with the actual uh, mechanism in there. And then it'll help to have a pair of uh, side cutters and then also a pair of pliers. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna need a Phillips screwdriver because I need to remove my uh, part cooler that's actually the Cobra style and it has a Phillips screw on the back side so we're gonna get started by um, disconnecting some stuff here so we want to start by taking off the fan on the side and it'll help to have your um, your Z axis raised up a bit so you can actually get underneath it and work it you know work with it fairly easily now it's I probably should have raised mine up a little higher, but since I'm working with these Allen wrenches here, uh, it shouldn't be a problem at this height. So we want to get those those Allens loose, and we just want to pull this whole thing apart. Now I'm going to try and leave as many of these wires hooked up as I possibly can, uh, because on the WAN house. Um, there's a lot of connectors here and I don't want to get mistaken on which connector went where and all that stuff. So it's probably going to be the best bet to just leave that stuff hang just like that. So we're going to actually take the uh, blower motor and just sit it behind the rails there and, and just let it sit there and we'll be fine with that. So now what I'm going to do is I want to disconnect my part cooler and I'm just going to slide the fan out of the way and undo this one Phillips screw that I got here holding it on. And that's it. That one's done. This is a pretty easy swap. You can do one of these in probably about 20 minutes. Um, so now that we have that loose, we actually want to pull this part out. This is the uh, stepper motor. And we're going to want to use our Allen wrench here. And I believe that's the 2 millimeter. And we're going to want to uh, take the plastic uh, mechanism off of this stepper motor. So we're going to take out the screw with the spring and the, the lever there. And we're just going to set that aside. We won't be needing that again. And you can just set the screw with it. And then there's another screw in the stepper motor right there. We're going to also remove that one. And again, setting the screw aside because we won't need that. Now we just have the uh, spur gear left and we need to uh, 
get that off of there as well. So you're going to get your one and a half millimeter Allen wrench and actually loosen that up. And it should be fairly easy to get off. You just need to loosen it maybe a half a turn and just pull that right off. Okay, so now we got the stepper motor uh, set up and ready to go. Next, we're going to actually want to uh, loosen up the, um, the heat block. So you're going to get your two and a half millimeter. And we're going to get that loose. Now there's two bolts on this. And just remember righty tighty lefty loosey. Uh, to get those screws off it can sometimes be a little confusing when you're trying to do it upside down or whatever case now for me you want to set keep that screw that we just took off the bottom of the heat block um, i have a magnetic tray here comes in handy you don't lose any screws and um, i'm just gonna put that in my magnetic tray because i'm going to be using that uh, later on in the install so definitely make sure you keep that that screw handy now we're going to get the second screw out here. And there we go. I'll set that in our tray. Now with that loose, I'm actually going to disconnect my temp probe here or the um, you know, the thermistor. Now we have the heat block here, but the uh, the barrel element here is basically uh, you can unhook it so it's permanently attached there so what we we'll want to do is we're just going to uh, unloosen that rub screw on the bottom there with the one and a half millimeter allen wrench right in the bottom and just turn that until it loosens up and you'll have a little hole in the bottom of the insulation there um, and that's how they put it together which is fine um, so you're just going to slide that out of there and what we're going to do is we need to take the screw completely off of the heat block so that we can pull our thermistor out of there now we're just going to set that screw aside we won't be using that screw again and there's our thermistor just uh, take very good care and caution that you don't bend this too much or uh, you know just be very careful with it that's glass on the end there and you do not want that to break if it does you're not going to have a working unit here so this is the um, heat block with the uh, heat break and uh, the, the you know block there in the nozzle. We can set this whole thing aside. We won't be using this again. So we're just going to set that aside with all of our other parts that we're not going to be using right now. And we're basically just left with an element and our thermistor there and the stepper motor. Okay. So now we're ready to start installing this thing now for me i'm going to be using the standard um heat block here i don't need the high temp one right now and again there is a difference and you can tell uh the one that's got just a straight shaft on it with no cuts in it um that's going to be the ht version this is the high temperature version this is the standard version so just make sure that you pick the right one for the job and i believe they have different nozzles in them as well um let's see this one has a Nope, it's a 0.4, and the same with this one's 0.4. Now, these have been pre-torqued from the factory, uh, so we don't really need to go ahead and mess around with that too much. Um, that should be good to go. They do advise that once you get this thing all together, they heat this up to around 240C, and then just re-torque that and make sure that it's tight. That way there's no um, material that's oozing out of the threads. This is a really nice kit, by the way, too. It has a real nice silicone um, cover on it, similar to the E3D V6. Um, so I really like that. I don't have to fool around with insulation or those little, you know, yellow, you know, back things and trying to get something on there to try to contain some of the heat. So uh, that that's nice that they included that. So now I have my thermistor. I'm going to actually install that into this, and you can see on the one side here. There's actually a new screw, and it has a really nice rubber washer on there. And you can see that there. So you're going to want to use that for your thermistor. Now, one thing that I ran into was when trying to put this in the borehole there where the thermistor is supposed to go, and the thermistor is supposed to go uh, right there, right in this little hole right, right there. But my glass bulb is too big to actually fit in that. So I'm like, oh, shoot, what am I supposed to do? 
So I peeled this up a little bit and I could see that there is a, a bigger hole there that's threaded. So I'm actually gonna use that one. It's gonna work out fine. So if yours is, your thermistor is similar to mine and it will not fit in that little hole there, you can always use this upper one. It's the best I got without having to order a new thermistor and uh, go through all that. So I'm just gonna sit that in there like that and I'm gonna take the screw that they provided and just sit that down on top of there and I wanna screw that in. Just be very careful that you do not over tighten this. Um, that's the worst if you actually um, tighten this thing down so much that it ruins the insulation on the wires and actually causes it to wear through and then your sensor is actually shorting out on the, um, on the block itself. So that's not good for anybody. So just be careful not to over tighten that. Now, this thing is basically just meant to hold the um, thermistor in place so it doesn't fall out. So it does not need to be super tight. Just remember that. It doesn't have to be super tight. Just tight enough to hold the thing in place so it doesn't fall out. So there we go. That's installed and we're ready to go. Now I'm ready to install my, um, my barrel element back inside of the tube here. And I'm going to have it sitting in there like that. So my element's going to go this way. So I'm going to loosen up the screw on the bottom here. Just like that. And there's actually a liner inside of there. Now this is made for uh, different elements that are possibly smaller in diameter. So uh, for me, I need to remove this little brass um, liner that's inside of there. It's basically just in case the diameter of this is smaller than the borehole of this. It actually can make up the difference when you tighten up the screw on the bottom and keep the element touching the, all the sides of the, the, the heater block. So I'm just going to slide that in there and it slides in real nice and I'm going to center the thing up. Uh, you can see that I have about the same distance sticking out this side as I do on that side. And I'm just going to put that in a position so that it can sit just like that. And I want to tighten up that screw on the bottom there. And as far as I can tell, this is a pretty nice high quality kit. And I do run for $180, but this is basically a, a one, one size fits all. So it'll basically do any type of filament that you want to run through your machine that this will handle. So that is one nice thing about this kit. And that's what prompted me to, um, to go ahead and get and pick one up. Okay, so now we have our cooling block and you can see the fins are going to be facing out the left side of the actual printer. Um, and we have holes there for our fan, you know, bolts to go through. And then we also have two on the bottom. So this is going to be called the bottom here. And these screws that we had earlier that we took off, we're going to be reusing those. So make sure you get those ready. But one other thing we're going to need is an actual screw to go right in here. And this basically is going to, you know, for our uh, heat break or heat, yeah, for our heat break is going to slide up into the cooling block. And we need a screw to tighten that up. And I didn't see one in the kit. I don't know if maybe I was just missing it or what. I'm not sure. But I just grabbed an extra screw. I had plenty of them. And we're basically just going to take a, a three millimeter screw. And make sure that it's not too long. That it's pushing out the back side of the uh, block. And you can see with it tightened up that it's just a tiny bit too long there. Which is fine. Uh, that You do have enough clearance on the back side. So you're basically going to need to put a screw in there before you continue any further. So um, let me measure that and see what size screw that actually is for you guys. You're going to want something that's around 10 millimeters. If you can get like a 10 millimeter, uh, a three millimeter by 10 millimeter screw, you're in business. Uh, mine happens to be 12 mil, which is still fine. It's just going to slightly be sticking out the back side of this when it's come fully, you know, tightened up. So uh, not a huge deal, but um, there we go. So you want to get that prepped and ready so that we can slide our heater block in then. So we're going to sit that back on there and we're going to start putting our two Allen heads back into the bottom of the cooling block. There we go. There's one. Just don't tighten it up too much until we get everything situated and you know that 
um, you got all your screws in place and everything's good to go and it's gonna uh, sit properly there so it does give you uh, room in here this bottom plate is slotted and as you can see there um, with it loose we got a lot of room to slide this back and forth up and down so um, that, that's nice that they did that okay so now that we have our block installed our cooling block we want to go ahead and we want to snug these screws up because once we get our um, heat block in there we're not going to be able to get to these screws to tighten them up any further so try to get them positioned as evenly in there as you possibly can and you might need to adjust this uh, once or twice once you get everything reinstalled and um, but it's it's very easy to take apart and slide around in and adjust for me i'm going to keep mine as far forward as i can as the screws that are on here i don't want to poke into the back of the stepper motor or anything so i'm just going to kind of keep mine a little bit forward there and now i'm ready to put my whole heater block assembly inside the uh the cooling block and it's in there whole the whole way you it won't sit flush with the top of this thing so don't worry about that it's going to be about a quarter inch down the heat break from the the cooling tube there or the cooling block so go ahead and just snug that up and making sure that it is in the position that you want it to be for me i gotta square that up a little bit i'm trying to do this while i'm on camera with you guys so it's a little bit harder to see it but okay so now we have that all set up and uh we're good we'll set that aside for now and we're gonna start with the let's get this crap out of here now we're gonna start assembling the uh, stepper motor here so we want to take our gear there and then this little dial and we're going to set this basically make sure keeping in mind where your uh, plug is going to be clocked on your actual motor so mine's going to sit with the plug sitting up so i need to keep that in mind while i'm installing this thing so i want to have mine set up get that gear out of there something like that okay so with the plug facing up the screw that's going to hold this whole lever system is going to go in the upper left side there and i want to take my middle allen wrench that i have the two millimeter and i'm going to snug up that screw onto the motor itself And I want it to be pretty snug. Okay. Making sure that it can still slide back and forth as well. Now we're going to put our gear on here. And this actually has two um, grub screws on it. So make sure that you screw those out completely. So that you can get this on there. And you can always look down inside to make sure that the grub screws aren't actually poking through the inside of the diameter of the uh, barrel there. So I want to sit this in place. And try to eyeball it up with the actual brush and you can see there there's the brush and I want the actual grub or the um, the gear to be sitting pretty much in the middle of that okay so once that's in place I'm going to just snug this not very tight at all uh, because we will have to adjust it again so I just want it to be snug just a little bit so i can get that into place there okay so it's going to sit just like that and i'm not going to worry about tightening up that other screw for now because again i'm going to have to adjust the gear in and out to make sure that it's when i push the filament down through there that it's actually riding right in the middle of that um that gear there okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our adjustment dial and we're actually going to put that in the upper right corner of the stepper motor just like that and we want to tighten that up now just for starters you want to keep this on number four 
So this is like a dial right here and it'll have um, etched into it one, two, three, and four. We just want to turn it to four and that's going to give us the least amount of tension on the actual gear with the spring and all that. Okay. So now with that in place, this is optional, but this will definitely help you feed filament through here much easier. You actually want to take one of your PTFE tubes and you can see that it's actually cut. So it's cut on this side and that side. You want to slide that down into the top of this hole here. So that one side of that is basically just touching the, your uh, little gear there. Okay. Now we're ready to actually slide that piece of filament that I had you get earlier. And this is basically just to adjust the gear when we're first installing it. So we just want to slide that down through there and you may need some help to get that actually in there. It is a little tight at first, especially if your gear isn't aligned properly. So there we go. And again, I have it on four, so I have as much slack in it as I can possibly get. And I can see that my, my gear is pretty far off there. So what I need to do is I want to adjust that. So now what, with the filament sitting inside the, the lane there, I actually want to loosen up the spur gear. And I just want to kind of just keep it loose. I don't want that grub screw really loose but just a little bit so that I can get that to slide into the spot that it needs to be so that it will work properly while it's in there. So I need that to be lined up just right. So now that I have it lined up just right, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this, this um, gear up now. Just like that and that. And you want these to be pretty snug. You definitely don't want this coming loose and just spinning there, chewing up your gear uh, if those grub screws come loose. So double check that they're tight. You don't want them so tight that you're gonna strip out your Allen key or strip out the grub screw, but you do want it to be semi-tight. So now once that's tightened up, if you can just switch it to number two, just like that. That's gonna put enough tension on the actual filament that, that it's gonna push through there just like so and we're pretty much set up we got this thing dialed in now we're ready to install this onto the actual uh, cooling block so we got our filament pulled out of there and you'll notice that there's a piece of PTFE tubing that was already in the heat break and we want to make sure that 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 uh, tip on it is facing side to side so when it slides up into this hole right here it's actually going to be sitting um, where these meet where these two uh, circles are right here. So right here and right here, just like the top one was. We didn't have the top one sitting like this because it's just going to be grinding up on those two um, circles there. We want it sitting sideways so it sits down in there closer to that. Same thing with the bottom, okay? So we're going to have the bottom facing in the same direction and we're just going to sit that tube right on top of this hole right here. And it's going to go on there just like that. Okay. Now we're ready to put our fan assembly back together. And we're almost done with this thing. Now real quick before we get to that. You will see that you have a bunch of extra parts in here. Don't be alarmed. Um, you have a bunch of spare nozzles here. And they're in a bunch of different sizes. Most of these nozzles here are mainly for the HT heater block here. Because you have like a 0.8 nozzle. Um... What else do we got? 0.6, I think. Yeah, there's 0.6. There is 0.5. And there's a really, really small one, and that is a 0.3. They also give you an extra brush. So this is the cleaning brush that basically rides on that uh, spur gear and cleans it. So it pulls any filament off of it or anything like that from it grinding up against it and keeps that nice and clean to help prevent jams. I don't know how the, well this is gonna actually work, but they do give you a spare one if it runs out, and I think you can buy these for a few dollars from uh, Flexion's website, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, another thing that you get here is an extra PTFE tube. So we have one spare there, and then you have another one that's inside the HT heater block. 
you also have another 0.4 nozzle in here. So if that one does get damaged or just wore out, you could always take the one off of your HT block and swap it over to the standard block um, if you wanted to. Now, last but not least, you have a set of wrenches. Now, these things are actually pretty cool. Normally, I hate this kind of thing, but these are actually handy. And what this is for is one of the wrenches is going to go on the heat brake, and the other wrench is actually going to fit on your nozzle. And this is an easy way to uh, change your um, nozzle if you need to while it's attached to the machine or if it's pulled off or whatever. This is an easy way to either retighten these or change nozzles out if you need to on the fly. So that's what they're for. So make sure that you keep these handy. I uh, probably don't want to lose them, although, you know, like a two Allen, or I'm sorry, two adjustable wrenches will do the exact same thing. So there we go. That's pretty much it. Now we're just going to um, reattach our cooling fan and then our part cooling fan back onto this thing and we're good to go. So now we have our cooling block here from earlier. We want to actually remove that. We're not going to be able to use this anymore. So we're going to take this off, but you definitely want to keep the spacer. So there is the, we have the, the cooling fan, spacers, and then these really long, I think they're 50 millimeter screws. We want to keep the rest of that. We're just going to remove this part and that's it. So we'll just set that aside. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide them into those two holes that are on the side there. And this is the trickiest part of the whole action, the whole install. What we need to do is actually get this motor here to line up with those two screws and you can end up fiddling with it for a little while. So hopefully I can get this pretty easy here. First try would be nice. I got the one. And the other one. Wow, that was very, very easily. So you're going to see here now that you have a, a distance in between the actual, um, you know, uh, gear uh, mechanism and the lever mechanism and the actual cooling fan. Um, I'm a little weird about that seeing how you know this used to go in there but now it can't fit because of the cooling fins that they have on the cooling block for their own so that basically makes this part obsolete which is fine it just keeps that sitting out a little bit further and it just looks a little weird but nonetheless it's ready to go so now we want to plug in your stepper motor again and then any other fans that you would have disconnected or anything like that you want to go ahead and hook back up in my case I need to hook up my thermistor yet, which the plug is right there on the side. So that's the only thing I disconnected, which makes it easy for me to simply just hook it back up. And I don't have to worry about what goes where or, you know, having to worry about labeling uh, wires and sensors or anything like that. So there we go. I got that hooked back up. And now I just need to install my Cobra fan back into place. And that's pretty cool. That thing comes off really easy. It's just one screw. If you guys don't have a part cooling fan and you're still using a stock one, shame on you. Those things are pretty bad to begin with. And these Cobra fans, I do like these a lot. I know there's some other options out there. Just get something. The one that comes on at stock is not the greatest and you will definitely see a improvement in the quality of your prints as soon as you go ahead and replace it. So there we go. Just tighten that up. So basically all we needed for this whole install was just a couple Allen wrenches, three Allen wrenches, and for me a Phillips screwdriver. That's pretty much it. So there you guys go. Um, one other thing you want to be, uh, you want to do once you get this thing all hooked up again is to preheat it again to 240 degrees Celsius and then retorque that nozzle on the bottom. Uh, make sure you're backing it up on the heat break itself. Do not try and grab the block um, or anything like that. Just definitely just grab it by the heat break with the wrench and a wrench on the nozzle only. Um, and that's it guys. Um, you just installed a uh, Flexion extruder and you have extra parts there on the side. So there you go. 
I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in one of these. If you have any questions about anything else or I missed something or just any comments in general, please leave them down below. And if you learned anything today, if you could, please leave a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Have a nice day.